Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to the RW. This is your host, Brandon Macy, and I am very excited uh, to have a close friend with me, Lawrence Moreau. Lawrence Moreau is the site manager for Lyondell Bissell and uh, been with them for a long time. He's a member of Royal Wood, and he's a good friend of mine, and I'm really glad to have you on today, man. Glad to be here. It's awesome. Um, we... You have recently just come back to Royal Wood. We lost you for a little while to Victoria Corpus and uh, Christi. Corpus Christi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Victoria Corpus Christi. It's all down there where where <laughs> you don't want to be, in my opinion. Uh, we won't say anything bad about that down there. But we, uh, you had been here for a long time. How many years had you been here before? So you it moved? was right at right at ten years. Before okay, we moved. Yeah. ten years moved for almost three. Right, for two. Okay, two. okay. For two years, it's, it felt like three. I know. Um, and then has now been back for a little while with us and, and you know, working right here um, as the new members director now. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But, man, I want to say I greatly appreciate you and your wife. Uh, you guys just have an amazing family, two beautiful kids. Uh, well, I guess your son, he, he wouldn't be want to, want to be called beautiful, beautiful. but he'll but, take it in this context. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but man, just a great family. And you guys, um, it was one of those that when you moved, you know, we were all thinking, man, we really hope that, you know, you're able to come back. And I know you guys felt the same way. Absolutely. And, uh, so glad to see you guys back now so thankful to be back it's been a blessing good to just plug in and thankfully with with great friends and a great church it's you can plug in like you never left yeah and just keep helping whatever we can do for god well and and you guys have always done that i mean you've always been very involved and helped in a lot of ways and you know when you moved i remember talking to you and you were kind of telling me the situation that happened, you know, with your boss saying, hey, you know, I need you to come down here and help us out with some things and restructure and, and do some of those kind of things. And any time that you can do a boss like that, a solid, you want to be able to do that. And, you know, he was true to his word. He said, once we get everything going, I'll get you back into the Houston area. And you've been able to do that. No, it's a blessing. I've been with them about 18 years. So wow. Starting when we were first in college, went for chemical engineering, and then uh, with that started full-time, and God's been very good to us. Uh, started initially in engineering roles Yeah. Uh, at various sites, the Channel View site. Uh, actually went to Corpus Christi the first time as an engineer, uh, and then came back to Channel View in, in various engineering roles. Then moved into management, time flies, about eight years ago. Um, and then moved into operations management of different technologies, propylene oxide, oxide ethylene oxide, uh, and then just been blessed uh, to now be in this role. So God's been really good. Also had the opportunity to uh, be the lead recruiter at University of Houston for about 10 years while I was oh, making those cool. moves. Yeah. Uh, so it is nice to look back and you've recruited this person or recruited yeah. that player, person. It's also a chance to influence others too, right? right. So, right. which I think is very important, just like we see it at church, right? Sure. It, it's important if I can make a difference or let God use me to help someone else in recruiting. Of course, there is a standard; people have to sure. meet that standard. Sure. But uh, it's nice to see people get those opportunities. But. Well, I, you know, I've had the opportunity and, and privilege to work with companies, and one of those was. Uh, at a bank that I worked at one time and had a chance to run a pretty good sized team and and be involved there and you know you you become very close with those people you see them oftentimes more than you see your own family and you're going through tough times together you're you're facing challenges mm -hmm. together you're taking heat together <laughs> sometimes and you know your relationship really grows with those people and you know, one of the things that, that I realized doing that, you know, I've worked more secular uh, than I have for the church, and I've been very privileged, and, and it's been an honor to be able to work for the church, but I've done more of that outside of the church than I have. And, 
It's a different dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not you're not working with volunteers. You're working with people that are that are paid. And oftentimes you have to learn how to really encourage those people and pull them up so you guys can reach the same goal. And it takes a team. Yeah, it does. And one of the things uh, at a place that I was at, I had a, a boss come in one day and he told me, he said, look, you need to find people's breaking point. And he's like, you need to push them to that breaking point. And I could I could tell that that I was probably looking at him in a in an odd way, and I I was not trying to do that, but I <laughs> I mean I couldn't believe that he said that, and he said, "Yeah, I'm serious. You need to push them to their breaking point, and figure out where that is and push them to that point." And I left that meeting going, you know, there is no goal in this life that I'm going to push people so hard that it affects their personal life, their family life that sort of thing, and that was something that I always tried to do. Anything that came down from management, I tried to deflect as much of that as I possibly could, and I know that you've done the same thing with you and your teams. No, Great points, and I agree with you. I'm really big on empowerment. Mm -hmm. We should really be more servant leaders. Sure. Um, And I ought to serve the ones that we lead, right? And at the end of the day, it shouldn't be about me. It ought to be about the team, about the site, about the church, about right. about others, right? Which is our focus with reaching, teaching, serving. Same same principles apply, right? And so, when you think of it in that way, you can be much more effective if you empower others. They buy into the vision. Now, typically, they will do more than what they would have if you just pushed them to their breaking point, That's right? True. Barring your word. So, uh, in that analogy, it's much better to help someone. Lead out of respect, lead mm-hmm. by example. Sure. And then if they see that you're doing that and now they see we've got a goal that we're all after. Right. Typically they'll do better. Um, John Maxwell has a great, great series, great book, Five Levels of Leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you think about the most basic level is you get the position and therefore you have authority, but it's just because of your position, right? That's right. And so, yes, I'm the boss because somebody made me the boss. Right. But if I got to pound the table to tell somebody I'm the boss, yeah. I'm probably not the boss, right? Well, and you could be the boss, but you're not going to be a leader. You you would not. So, quote, unquote, manager versus leader. If I'm effectively leading, I ought to be able to look back and see somebody following me, right? Right. Um, as opposed to that, while I'm there, they'll listen. Sure. But then the moment you go away, they do what they want to do, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we're talking about intelligent people. We're talking about the people of God. And in that, it's about serving. It's about right. leading by empowering. So, And I've seen that people respect you much greater. Going back to Maxwell's book, the position is first level. Then mm-hmm. you start to work towards results and you show people it's not about you, it's about investing in them. Right. And the top level, to just cut to the end, is leading from a position of respect. Right. People respect you, and because of that respect, now they do more, right? They're bought into what, what the vision is. So. Well, and I think, you know, empowerment and that buy-in is what matters. And, and the other thing is, is that you can't do it from a place of, I'm going to do this hoping that I get buy-in from these people. Mm -hmm. You have to do it from a place of, I really care about these people. I really want to invest in their lives and help their lives to be better. If you do it from that place and there's no ulterior motive, then those things will follow. And I think think that's tough for people in management. I mean, I've had, you know, many jobs through the years and I've seen I've seen good leaders and I've seen bad leaders, and you you can see right away the leaders that lead from a place of I just want to get those results. I'll say anything to get mm. those results, or versus the person that comes in and goes, I really want to help you. I want to help you succeed, and your success is going to go straight up to the top, and we're all going to be successful. Yeah, well said, and I think. So many times people get caught up in career, the next position, sure. these things, sure. and, and people see right through that, right? Yeah. And they should. Um, at the end of the day, if I show people I genuinely care, we're doing the things that we do because it makes us all better. 
right. or in the end, I'm developing you, right? I'm going right. to open a new door for you, or right. there's new opportunities. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of something like that, particularly when the results are happening too, right? I agree. And so at the end of the day, it needs to be beneficial for all. Sure. And it shouldn't be selfishly motivated. It shouldn't be about that. Right. And so I, I think it's no different in the kingdom of God. If if I'm doing it for the wrong reasons, the wrong motive, God, take me out of the way. I'm in it for the wrong reasons, right? Well, what you said is exactly right, and this is why I've never been a fan of micromanagement. Um, and I know you're not either uh, just because I know you. But if you micromanage someone – they're only going to become a box checker, meaning they're going to take this task list that you've created for them. And I've had to do this at jobs. I, I was forced to do this mm -hmm. in jobs by, by people above me that said, hey, we, put you, we want you to put them on an action plan. Well, if it's an action plan that you come up with, guess what? They're going to come in every day and go, what things do I got to do to appease this guy? Yeah, I agree. Instead of going, instead of showing them, hey, here's some things, here's some tools that I can give you to help you be successful. Let's set a goal here. Where do you want to be? Let's set that goal, and then let's figure out what the bite-sized pieces are yeah. to get to that goal. I'll help you any way I can. You tell me what you need from me for me to help you. But if you create a list and say, here's the checklist that I want you to follow every day, people will do just enough to get by. They'll do just enough to get by. And that is so true of the church. If we live for God in a way that we're saying, I'm just going to make sure that I follow these rules and I wake up every morning and I'm checking these off the list, there's no relationship there. No, if if you lived that way with Shante, who's your wife, and you said, honey, I've made this list out of things I'm going to follow every day to make sure that me and you stay on the up and up. When you wake up in the morning and go, hey, I love you, check. Hey, you're pretty today, check. You're going through that list. There's going to be no true relationship there, and there's no feeling there, and there's nothing growing between the two of you, same thing with the church. Oh, and it matters so greatly. It and does. That analogy is a great one. When I think about, thank God I've been blessed. We've been married 18 years. Man, and I so can't believe that. That doesn't happen without cultivating a sure. relationship and loving each other. Thank God I've been blessed with two beautiful kids or a handsome and a beautiful <laughs> there one. There you go. Uh, but in all seriousness, one, is it's God's grace first and foremost. Sure. But secondly, it takes true effort. To show there's some genuine actions on my part, right? Uh, to definitely cultivate that relationship, cultivate time. I'm big on I need to have work life balance, right? Right. Even though jobs can be demanding, life can be demanding. There's so many things vying for our time. At the end of the day, we have to set priorities. Oh, for sure. And, and so it's it's critical that what's most important. Think of this pandemic right now mm -hmm. and COVID. And I mean, if you think. Three months ago, say six months ago, would we imagine we'd be where we are today? <laughs> Absolutely not. But in the midst of all of this, it's a stark reminder of what's really important. Right. And when things stop and you almost go in survival mode, you you realize what you n really need to focus on. Yes, and you do. And I, to me, that's been one of the benefits of what we've gone through. I know it's hard to look at something like this and say, I can benefit from it, but I've benefited from things just going, there's not going to be things that I'm going to add back to my life. Um, you know, there, there's going to be things that in the past I would say, I'm not going to be able to do that. And it's not because I don't care that this person's having a, a birthday, but I can't go to a birthday party every Saturday for the rest of my life. And, you know, that doesn't mean you don't care about people, but our first job is to take care of our family, is to take care of what's at home, is to take care of ourselves. No, I mean, there's got to be times, and this is not selfish, but there's got to be times that we have to take some self-time. There's got to be times that you and Shantae go out on a date. There's got to be times that you have alone time with the two of you. All of those things need to happen, 
And, you know, I think the greatest struggle in life across all S aspects is balance, is yeah, just agree. being balanced. I, I and agree. it takes constant adjustment. It really does. All right, does. And, and I think there's, sorry, I mean, go ahead. No, 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 no. There's plenty of examples, too, if you don't have that balance in check or you let yourself get to either extreme too much. Um, it has a way of we can self-destruct just ourselves, Absolutely. right? And so I, I want that balance. I love it when we have the aspect, too, of we can hold each other accountable. We can pull each other's coattails. Right. Having those mentors or people in your life that you know you can rely on, it, it to me, is priceless. Yes. Um, because helping strike that balance, sometimes I need that, right? Right. And, and so I've relied on that. I, I like to believe I provide that for others, too, uh, because I think through the years where we can mentor and help, it goes to where it's not about us again, right? It's right. about helping somebody, as well as you know that you can bring things to someone in confidence, or if they say they're praying about something, they're going to pray about it, right? right? And all, all of that matters greatly. And I think consistency is such a key factor in life, too, and that's for for the church for things that you do if you're going to lead you need to lead with consistency right. right if people know that it's tried and true uh, what you told them today will be the same thing six months from now or if you commit to do something you're going to deliver or at least communicate why you can't right um, all of those things are important and i think when you think about the church and the ministry and I mean, if you think about the value of souls and eternity is for forever, right? the things that we do, it has to count. Um, and so when I think in those terms, yes, there are work analogies that apply, but when I think about the grand scheme of eternity, right, that's what's most important. Right. So am I really making a difference? Are the decisions actually counting? Uh, are the things that I do truthfully impacting somebody? Or am I just shallow, surface deep? Right. Um, all of that is for what I want to be remembered by, not that it's about me, but it's more so, God, am I making an impact? Am I helping someone? Right. So whether it's the Connect, whether it's new members, we're blessed to have lots of guests, thank God. Uh, we've been having guests even recently since we've been back in service. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. And that's a responsibility too, right? All right. in the same sentence. And so with that, it's the severity of, where am I going to spend eternity, and how are we helping our guests get there too? Right. right? And at a minimum, let's be connecting with them. Let's we'll talk about that more later. But yeah, I, I think it's it's an awesome opportunity. No, I agree. And you know, you're you're talking about you know family responsibilities and stuff like that. You came from a pretty good sized family, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've got how many? brothers and sisters so i'm the oldest of six in the immediate family okay okay um and we lost one and yeah so five now but uh yeah definitely when when i think of our family and i think of your ability to take someone under your wing yeah your brothers or sisters and um and if nothing else it also helps with your patience and you, you're just that camaraderie that that connection um, but but it's also an element of being a role model, being an example, right. right? Doing doing the right thing. Are you perfect? No. But I think there's times that that element of learning together or or teaching it or you, you look in life. I would pray that I don't have to learn every lesson by living it. Sure, right? <laughs> sure. I would definitely want to take that example from where maybe that person didn't do it the best. Right. Um, but now I can glean from it and, and do better, and so. In it, I think in family, there's plenty of those examples, and definitely in the world, you see a lot of that. Right? Now, you had told me a story before, and and I thought this was incredible. But your mom and dad were divorced, yeah. right? For how long? So I'll, I'll back up just a little bit. It's because this is incredible. It, it, it is. Yeah, I, I like to actually give this testimony too. I give it occasionally with teaching, but um, so prior to God. Um, my dad's priorities definitely weren't about church and sure. they were blessed, did well financially with trucking company, but that was really the focus, right? And, uh, God in a series of events and tragedies started to bring the focus back to where it really needed to be. And so yeah. it, it went from doing well to essentially not having anything. And then God leading my dad, uh, to church, but 
prior to all of that happening, my mom and dad were together. They got married when I was an infant. Um, prior to that, of course, and then I was born, and then right when I was an infant, unfortunately, they separated. Right, and that was when priorities were on the company and everything else. Sure. Um, and then God put them back together at age seven. So it was roughly about seven years of being an only child. And they have two anniversaries. They're still together today, um, April 15th, which is awesome. So yeah. when, but w- that, th- to me though, you just really don't hear that very often where, where there's a couple that is split up for that amount of time. No, I, agree. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good amount of time. And I know both of your parents right now, great people. And if you met them, you would never know, would know. that. Um, Mm. and, and they went on and had all the several kids after that. So I was an only child and then that's why I'm the oldest because then there was more more kids after that. All that that. got messed up. Um, but, but awesome. I mean, when we got back together, when they got back together and I was able to be back with my dad, um, which I thank God to this day. And so when you think about that, more importantly, my dad had been baptized in Jesus name. He got the Holy Ghost already. He was in church. My mom was not. And so when they got back together, my mom was saved. Actually, God filled me with the Holy Ghost in our house, uh, which is which is awesome. It was a prayer meeting. They had actually sent me back to my room. Yeah. Um, and I had, in my own childish way, pulled my chair out in the hall, and I was listening to what was going on. And God said, "It's I'm choosing you today, right? And yeah. So, and what, 45 minutes later, still speaking in tongues, which Man, is amazing. That's, so, that's awesome. So when you... Th- Think about and what God does with those experiences. Yeah, that's that's what it's about. So yeah, well, and you you briefly mentioned this, and man, I remember this just vividly because I remember talking to you after this this happened. But you lost your brother. How long has that been now? So it's been five years, actually. Man, time it, flies. it doesn't seem like it's been time, that long. Time flies. And and how much younger? Was he than you? So he was 14 years younger than me. Okay. Because I'm almost positive he came with you and we met. He did. Actually, he and Daniel, the brother right under me, they both did, um, as well as my two sisters that come too. Yeah. Um, Joel, my brother, was younger at the time. He's the youngest. Yeah. Uh, But they did come. And when you think of... Getting that phone call is not the phone call you yeah. ever want to receive. Yeah. Um, and initially when we got it, we were on the west side of Houston. That happened in Lake Charles. For those that don't know, he passed away due to drowning. Um, and just unexpected. Yeah. Uh, great heart. Excellent personality. Just always smiling. Yeah. He'd make you smile if you, even if you were having a bad day. Um, but I will say... God has a way through all of that. Do we want it to go? Do we want to go through sure. that? Never. Absolutely not. Um, for my parents, for all the family connected, no. But I, I will say God's used it in ways for us to be able to help others. Yeah. Right? First, I'm glad to be able to say he lived a good life. He was a great young man yeah. uh, and an example to many. And How how old was he? He was 22. Yeah. 22. So man. young, man. Yeah. I mean, just. You know, and I, I remember, you know, from things that you had said about him, that he was very stable, young man. I mean, a great guy, and you know, that's that's never something, especially when it's something like that that's unexpected. And to me, that's the hardest thing, right? When you when you have something unexpected like that happen, you know, it's one thing to know someone's sick and know that. Maybe they have a disease and something's uh-huh. coming, but when you get blindsided by something like that, uh, that that's a whole different thing altogether, you know. And and honestly, you know, I I looked up to the way that you guys handled it because, um, you know, I think about my sister. I've got one sister, but I mean, a sibling like that, especially at that age. You never expect something like that, you know. 22 years old, man, they got their whole life ahead of them. And, you know, I saw the way you and your family handled it, and it was an example to me of, man, this is the way you handle things. This is the way you you lean on 
the Lord when something like this happens because I don't know what people do in tragedy that don't have God to lean on. I really don't. So when I think about our faith and our hope in Him, if you have hope in this life only, you'd be of all men most miserable, right? Right. Um, and, and when I think about the hope we have beyond this life, and then I think about a brother that I know lived a good life and a life that lined up with the Word of God and was a good example. Yes, it brings consolation. Does it heal all the hurt? If I be honest, no, right? No. Um, but when I think about God's grace, the sufficiency of His grace, strength that you didn't even know where it came from, right? Um, but it's people praying for you. It's so many that stood by us too. right? Um, in addition to we tried to then be strength to others, and we've seen that God's allowed us to even be a strength to people still today because of it. Right. Or there's definitely been conversations that I feel are probably more meaningful having been what I've been through. Right. When someone else is going through something similar. Is the two scenarios the same? No, we don't profess for it to be. Sure. Um, but I, I think being able to relate, being able to say, here's how God helped us. Right. Here's how his grace and strength there were times going through that that when you think about peace and we say the word mm -hmm. and we say God can give peace, going through a scenario like that and have times that that's what real peace is, right? Yeah. Times that... Well, it's the, it's the peace that passeth all understanding. It is. And you, you said it perfectly when you said this strength comes, this peace comes from a place that you don't even know Absolutely. where it's coming from. And that that is that peace that passes on her that you don't understand it. You don't understand how you could deal with a situation like this. Right. You know, in, in a normal circumstance, you should be more upset. You should be more torn up. You should have these other feelings. But, you know, I, I've said this many, many times on this podcast. We will never know what God can do if we don't talk about what he's done and sometimes it's hurtful things like loss. Yeah. But I do believe that we experience those things so we can reach out to someone else and go, look, you know, I lost a family member to this or, or I know what it's like to go through something similar. And, yeah, those situations are never exactly, you know, parallel. Right. But a lot of times they cross paths in some way that you can find a common ground and go, I know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to go, I'll never see their face again. I'll never get to do this with them again or whatever it is. But that's where God steps in is in our weakness and in that place where we look around and go, God, I don't have anywhere where else to turn. No, I, agree. I mean, you're my only option right now. And, and, I mean, the Bible said that he would be a comforter. That's when he comes in and comforts us, gives us peace. And here you are five years later, maybe not knowing that you would actually even be able to talk about it at some point, you know. Um, when you go through things like that, the thought of talking about it is beyond us, you know. And it is. It, shortly after it happened, and this is just the reality of life, there are things that can occur or a song that plays or any of those things that it takes you back instantly, you, you right? You get together for family, you know, holidays I, 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 and absolutely. that sort of thing. Or even worse, sometimes it blindsides you because you weren't expecting it and now it's, it's just there. Right. And thank God that that peace that surpasses all understanding rushes in again. Yeah. But you're also human. Right. And, and I think the ability to be able to talk about it, I think, is where God can still flow through that example, right? right. Flow through that experience. It's it's a tragedy, quote unquote. But if you think about that we're all trying to get to heaven, maybe not so much, right? Right. Hard for us still on earth to accept that. Sure. But I, I think that's maturity that comes, the the faith and hope in him that knowing that yes, that's where we're all trying to strive to get to. Right. And and furthermore for the person that's struggling or that's going through something similar is definitely much more effective to then lock arms with them absolutely and pray with them or say an encouraging word or sometimes it's not about what you say it's just listen yeah right and but the fact that they know you've been through something similar mm -hmm. you being that ear may mean a little more right because they know that 
maybe that groaning that can't be uttered. You've been there, yeah. right? That yeah. kind of thing. So, well, and and I think people appreciate first of all the sincerity of going. I I, I understand where you are, and you know, there's no way that one person could face all the things that life can throw at you, right? Mm -hmm. But we can try to put ourselves in people's shoes. And, and you and I talked about a little a little bit about this, and, and I talked about this on, on a couple podcasts ago with, with Joe Stevens, where we were talking about everything that's happening with race and stuff right now, mm -hmm. and the whole George, George Floyd situation and all that. And, you know, what I've tried to do during this situation is put myself – in other people's shoes. I, I said this to somebody the other day, and, and we're not going to talk a lot about, about this, but I, I told somebody the other day, I said, there's two things I don't understand. I don't know what it's like to be black, and I don't know what it's like to be a cop. I don't know either one of those things. Yeah, true. And, you know, I, I'm not weighing in on, on any of that when it comes to, hey, this person was right, this person was wrong. That doesn't matter. Hurt is there. Things happen, you know, in, in certain situations that are unfortunately end bad, like that situation. But I don't know what it's like to be either one of those, you know, if you want to say those opposing sides. Yeah. And so I've tried in the last little while since this stuff's gone on to go, can I put myself in their shoes and try to go, this is what it's like. This is what, you know, people are facing on a daily basis. And, you know, what was it, Paul, that said, I I'm all things to all oh, men, yeah. right? I think that's our duty is to go, you know, I've never been, uh, I've never had a sibling that's passed away. But I I'd like to try to put myself in that place and go, I don't, I can't completely understand what that loss feels like but i know what loss feels like mm -hmm. and you know we obviously know the positive things that we can bring into our lives we can say hey we can do this better we can make sure that we're in control of the way we treat people um there there's so much to that and a thing that i'm not a fan of that seems so prevalent in this day and age is finger pointing wherever the finger is pointed. I, 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 I'm just not a fan of that. Look, we never get anywhere by pointing fingers anywhere. But what we do get a place from is from internally pointing those fingers back to ourselves and going, but wait, what can I control here yeah. that I can do better? If every person did that with themselves and go, what can I do better? I mean, the world would be a no, completely I, different I, I place, agree. I agree. you know? So I didn't even plan on getting on that. But, you know, I, I, I do know that that's something that we're facing right now, and people don't know what to do. The thing that we got to do is we got to make sure that we're changed, that we're different. And if everybody does that, then it's going to change the whole thing. It's just like your team concept. No, absolutely. If everybody is given 100%, then guess what's going to happen to the main goal, I mean, it's going to be it reached and and right. blown past, you know. Yeah, and I think I didn't know that we would necessarily get to that subject, but I would say, I think the most important part in, in all of it is first, let's focus on Him. Mm -hmm. And like you said, God, I want to be right. right. Yes. So for experiences that we have lived through, I mean, some of it's very real, right? Sure. And when you think about what has happened, you think about how people respond on any issue, right? People will always have an opinion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any person maybe right or wrong more than one than the other. Right. Um, mainly because in some cases people haven't m walked that mile in someone else's shoes, sure. right? Or they don't understand. But um, that's not that we should should do things against the law or, or things that aren't right. But, right. but at the end of the day, I want to do things that, that help people, right? I want to do things that, that are an encouragement to folks. I want to provide opportunities. I want to help where we can. Yeah. Right? And, and I think in it, more importantly, it should be, God, how can I be used 
to help. Right. And and it may mean that I need to change, right? I, I sure. may very well need to look in the mirror and say, wow, I, God let your light shine in me, and I didn't know that was there. Or I, I didn't know that maybe I do need to pray about this more or commit myself more in this area or that area uh, to be a better example, to be, to be able to help in some way. Well, I think, Lawrence, things happen in life to make us more conscious of outside things. For instance, since COVID, I've washed my hands more. Uh, doesn't mean I wasn't washing my hands before, but I wash my hands more now mm-hmm. than I ever have, and I've been more careful than I ever have. A situation like this comes along. You know what? More than ever, I've reached out to people outside of my demographic and gone, how are you guys doing? I've talked to random strangers recently and just gone, hey, I'm with you. You know, I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back, but I've made up in my mind that I'm going to be proactive about this. It's not something that, again, I'm washing my hands more than I ever have before. I'm doing the same thing with this. I'm reaching out more than I ever have because it's needed. No idea. We we know that that's needed. It doesn't matter how many people are affected by it. It's needed. And so, to me, that's our responsibility of when things happen. We need to be more conscious of our surroundings, of others, and then do, then step it up. No, I agree. You know? I mean, even if you take, just take the pandemic, for example, there's cases when we shift to more remote working, more remote sure. church, all of these sure. things. By necessity, we had to go connect more. We right. had to go shift right. to online, or we had to do more phone calls or various social media outlets, all these different things to, hey, I still care. I still want you to right. know that we're here. I want you to know that we're here to help or maybe we can bless somebody financially. And we did some of that too as a church, right? Sure. And all of those things, you know, there's a need. There's people without jobs. There's people hurting. And at the end of the day, grab gravitate to the need, right? Don't, yes. Don't say it, but then put no action with it, right? And Agreed. so with it, I think... Either one of these examples that we see in our world right now, there is a need. Yeah. And I think the quicker we can move to say, God, let me be a part of helping with it, or let me make that additional phone call, or let me sure. reach out to this person that I know that may be hurting or is on the wrong side of an argument or a discussion, whatever, right? Sometimes people need a different perspective. I agree. Um, first off, I recognize we've been blessed. Right. But too much is given, much is required. That's not entitlement. Right. If anything, it's a greater responsibility to go help somebody else. And so sure. w- when I think it in that context, it's more like, wow, God, I need your strength, right? I, I need you to empower me to, to be more effective, to be a greater help. Right. Even though, yes, we are a blessing, you try to do what you can, but when you think about the abundance of needs, that's that much more onus on us That's to right. go try and deliver, right? So, well, and and you know, again, I've known you for a long time, and you've always, you've always been that kind of person to, you know, step up when there was a need, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we're super excited about you guys being involved with new members, and and the connect, and you know, uh, Dan Castleberry, Robin Castleberry did an amazing job with that. Um, I had him on the podcast. We talked about things they were doing. I mean, Dan's a good friend of mine. You know, I'm I'm excited to see this next chapter of their life, you know, as they start this new church that they're working on and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to miss them uh, from that aspect. But I'm, I'm excited about you guys stepping into that role and the things that you've done already since you've been here. The, the challenge was you guys stepped into a role right at the cusp the of pandemic. COVID-19. And then, you know, one of the first things that you guys did, which, you know, has been a huge, huge asset, is create the Connect Online that you guys do every Thursday at 7, right? 7.30. 7.30. Um, that's been amazing. And you guys have had a lot of participation in that where you've been able to connect with with new members and that mm-hmm. sort of thing um, with an online setting. So uh, how how's all that gone? I mean, I know you and I have talked about it off mic, but... Yeah, 
first I'd like to say that the Castleberries did do an amazing job. Yes, and of course their team too, the, the Sliders, yeah, and that's what everybody I'm else. So wonderful team. The Sliders lead the Connect. The Decimos lead the Altar Ministry team. Uh, Sister Wendy heads up things with the baptism. Yeah. Aaron helps behind the scenes on so much. She had helped with a lot of scheduling and so many things that people don't see, but those things are critical. They have to happen right? when you think about how much service we have and, and how much that we do. So, uh, one, great team. Yes. And definitely, thankfully, even when we were here before, the Castleberries were already doing a great job right. with leadership and right. setting the right tone and all the, the material, working with the sliders and others and uh, just making sure that we had the right people in the right places and everybody right. was doing their part. And um, now you say, here's a pandemic, here's COVID, and we still want to connect with people. We want to manage some of the behind the scenes so we don't lose anyone Right. Uh, just because we're not keeping in touch with them. And so part of the online was, okay, let's still provide that class opportunity where we can connect. It's interactive. You can talk, ask questions, um, and have those questions answered right there. All of those things have been really good to see people, in addition to prayer requests, and uh, just you you see that people enjoy that connection, right? Right, right. As well as I'd be remiss if I didn't say there's an awesome relationship that Pastor Slatter has cultivated through the years with guests. He's amazing. And and I think that element needs that interaction, right? Right. It's beautiful to see that in work, uh, whereas if it's, something live you don't get that same type of right. interaction so in this case the class setting but online lets you have that prayer time interaction um, and, and it's been great even some that want to continue and you've got multiple classes and all of that's good and we've got a good rotation of teachers now too so um, well and i you know again i'm i'm excited you know there was a good team there already you guys stepping in and helping them out uh I know is a huge blessing, and I'm excited to see, you know, where this goes. We're, you know, you were on a call with us the other day. We're trying to get, you know, uh, the RW online. Absolutely. Where people can literally become members online. I'm very excited about that. And obviously everything you guys are doing, this is going to dovetail right into that, and and we're excited about that. And, and it's awesome because it's also whether you just come into the church or you've been in church for a while it still lets you connect it lets you have opportunities the online platform is a miss if we don't plug into it more right right right. and we've seen that firsthand the last three months or so and thankfully thankfully we thankfully we've been blessed and we had it the investments all were very well worth it um god in his infinite wisdom and and some pushing to make sure all of that happened um and and god's used it for his glory which is wonderful so in the same way, the Connect Online, Roy Wood Online, we have some ideas of how we can keep growing things and yeah. how definitely we can make the experience that much better for the guests as they go through. So if you're a seasoned, experienced saint, maybe you don't go through all of the classes like you normally would. Right. Um, but there still needs to be a good welcoming welcoming experience. Sorry for them, too. Um, well, anytime you join a new job, you join anything, there's orientation, there's integration there. Absolutely. There's an onboarding process. And so to me, I look at all of that kind of in the same way. You're trying to figure out, hey, what is the history of the church? What are we plugging into here? What what is, you know, what are, what are the goals? What are the values of the church? And and that's the great place to be able to share all that stuff. And so I'm I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen there. Uh, man, I want to thank you for taking the time to come out because I know that you're very busy way on the other side of town oh. and, and for you to, to come over and do this podcast, I really appreciate it. And I, I want to tell you, I appreciate your friendship. You've been somebody that I could always reach out to and know that if it's prayer that I need, if it's support, uh, whatever it is, you are a friend and a person that that sticks by you no matter what. And and I want to tell you publicly because I've told you privately that I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm glad for you to be in my life and for you to be back here at Royalwood, man. It's mutual for sure. I've told you the well, same. And, I appreciate and you know that. It. 
I'm glad to be here on the podcast. Definitely glad to be back at Royal Wood. Um, and, and to me, when I think about true friendship, or as our pastor says, it's hard to make a new set of old friends. <laughs> it definitely um, is. And and I I view it that way. Not trying to date us. Yeah. But but I I view it that that connection that bond is tried and true. We're there for each other. Absolutely. And we want others to know that that's the type of friendship that can be right. And Absolutely. There's an element of caring that comes with that. There's a sure. definitely sincerity and just what you see is what you get, as well as you know that. We're going to pray for each other. We're going to stand by each other. Yeah. And we'll help any way we can. Well, man, thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, we will be dropping a new episode, and you can watch us through the RW app. If you don't have that, get it for your iPhone, Android, Google Play, and also check out our new Roku TV uh, app that you can go check out the podcast. You can check out um, sermons. You can check out new music that we're dropping. And then you also want to check that same app out on Apple TV. So go check that out. Make sure that you tune in. And then check us out. Facebook, Instagram, share, like, give a comment. And thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great week. Awesome.